Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, traders from across the globe. Thank you for participating in Metastocks Extravaganza today. I'm sure that you will see some fantastic teachers today. You will learn about great programs and, you know, Metastock, I cannot applaud them enough. I've been using Metastock since I'm 18 years old in this business. I'm not even going to tell you the year because it was like 97 years ago, but I've been using Metastock for my entire career and I can say I've used many other types of software. This is my go-to software. It does very, very well for me and my Omniacs around the world. So thank you guys at Metastock for allowing us to have this. Um, next thing I will tell you is, you know, trading is risky. Did you know that? Very. <laughs> Make sure if you trade, you put your stops in, put protective stops in before you begin trading. In fact, if you're going to put on a position, I don't care what the stock commodity you name it is, put the stop in first, then put the trade on. You will live to fight a lot longer life of trading if you do it that way. Now that I've said that, let me explain what's going to happen today. You are looking at a chart, which is the exact same chart that you would have seen if you've seen the last two, yes, two, the last two Metastock webinars in a row. So we could go back to a Metastock webinar about six weeks ago, and we can go back about nine weeks before that. And these very same charts have been used in all of these webinars. And I leave everything on the charts because we look at them together. And what I try to do is show you, or at least offer to you, what I find are tips, tricks, and techniques that you can use trading going forward from this webinar and forward. So these charts are based on, as I mentioned, everything that we've been looking at. And what I like to do is just continue to update these charts so that you can see the analysis that we looked at in our last webinar, what we thought should happen based on that analysis. Did it happen? What can you glean from this to help you trade moving forward? Now, I've done hundreds and hundreds of webinars, seminars, and at all of them, I basically show you everything I can show you. And I don't even mention the Omni. I don't mention it. I don't tell you what the Omni is. I don't say if you follow Omni trades, this could happen. I just don't advertise for myself. One of my Omniacs, who is, that would be somebody who's come out to my five day course here in, in Vegas. I hold seminars, but for three or four people, very, very small. But I hold seminars. One of my students said, Oscar, you are not allowed to do another webinar unless you explain to people what the Omni is and what it does and where they can find it. And I said, well, no, deal, it's not really my style. I mean, I like to teach. I don't really like to, you know, if you want to sell to them, if you want to show them where to find me, I will allow you. So Neil put together this wonderful PowerPoint and he was going to show you his PowerPoint this morning for about five minutes before I presented the charts. And he put together a beautiful PowerPoint, which I approved, and then called me up to say, and Neil, I'm so sorry for you. I hope you feel better. I hope this all works out for you. God bless you. But he called up with a very serious problem in his family, and he could not present for me this morning. He was just going to do five minutes. So I said, you know what, Neil, send me what you did, and I will show them for you. So I'm actually going to show you <laughs> a little bit about what the Omni means, and then we'll get into these charts and you'll be able to figure out, I'll show you what the tips, tricks, and techniques are. So, Neil, this is for you, buddy. Not my style to do this, but let's see what Neil's got for us. I think it's kind of cool. Let's see what we get. All right, so, Neil put together, I won't say his last name, because he doesn't have it on here, so obviously he didn't want us to do that. And here's what he's got. Oscar, explain to them what the Omni is, because you say Omni all the time, you don't tell anybody what it means. All right, let's do it. So, this is his presentation. I will do it in his stead. What is the Omni? How does it work? From Neil, who's a graduated Omni Act of my course. And I'm just going to show you his PowerPoint and read what he wrote. I, I don't even know what it is, to be honest. I've glanced at it. In any trading session, there is more action than the open and close prices. There is money to be made between the high and the low, and that is absolute. Because, yes, you can look at a daily bar, and it's got an open, a close, a high and a low. But you're supposed to try to make money in between these highs and lows, right? I know that's what Omni does for us, at least it tries. Will the upcoming session go up and then down, or down and then back up? Will it go straight up, or will it go straight down or sideways? How do we know? It's not easy, right? Well, the Omni will give you a bullish, bearish, or neutral signal, 
And it will tell the trader whether to enter short or long and where to enter and exit that trade with your stops included. Hey, Bill, this is good. Thank you. <laughs> Let's go to the next brand. Um, Omni. Omni stands for, O-M-N-I stands for Oscar's Market Navigational Indicator. That Omni, which I've created, it's my baby, I've had it since the 80s, projects the direction of an instrument for the upcoming session. It recommends the stop, the entry, and the exit prices. It uses market indicators and technical analysis, and it works on any instrument in any time frame. Now, this is the stuff that Neil has discovered since he's left my Omnicam. I'm reading you his webinar. I'm liking it so far, his presentation. All right, so he's showing you my Omni page next. So what's on this page? If you join my website, which is absolutely free, you can come to the Omni page. The Omni's got two main parts. On the left side, tells you what I'm thinking of doing for the day. Am I a buyer of dips? Is the Omni a buyer of dips? It's not my opinion. Is the Omni a buyer of dips? Seller rallies. And it'll tell you what I'm thinking for the day, what time it is. So let's read what Neil said. The two main parts show the daily Omni with the current information and trade recommendations, which is true right here. The second side of it is Oscar's chat room where dozens of Omniacs hang out throughout the market session. The chat room is where you can talk with me, Oscar, and get the latest information straight from my lips. Now, he's absolutely right. I hang out in a live trading room every day of my life. It's a chat room. I am always there to help you and give you information. If you need it, please come to the site, click on it, and join me. No credit cards required. So there's two things here. There's Oscar's chat room, or there's the daily on. And I think Neil's probably going to get more into that in the next frame. Okay. So if... You're looking at this page, which is the Daily Omni page. If you join my site, you'll see what I want to do. If you scroll down on that page, you'll also see the chart that I'm looking at, you know, depicting some of the analysis I want to show you for that day, what my trades are based on. So on the Daily Omni page, you can see the current chart analysis to accompany the nightly video. You can also view any Omni trade recommendations that I've ever posted in my entire Omni career at least for the past 15 years on this site, pick any trade below and see the trades from that date. So Neil picked on the 29th, with one of his experiences for trading with me that day. He took the 29th and is going to break down the trade of the 29th. Following is a review of the Omni trade in the E-mini S&P 500, that's the market we traded, for September 29th. So remember, on the left side, it tells you what I want to do, and on the right side, you're going to find flash updates will come out which is my instruction. So 92923 is the date. Again, I didn't put this together, but I'm enjoying reading it to you. It's pretty cool. Um, the first flash update, let me go back. On this side, the flash updates will come out. There's a time, it tells you what time, what day. So the first flash update that came out, came out at 5.44 p.m. Before the market even opened at 6 p.m. First flash update, 17.44, right? 24 hour clock, military time, 5.44 p.m. I actually send the video. New video, the Omni Office buy signal, blah, blah, blah. If you click on that, you'll see the video. Now, clock note he's got at the bottom, Omni standard time is Eastern time. So any times you see are all Eastern time. All right, so the first flash update that went out, it rings, ding, 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 you see my video. I send out another flash update on the 29th, and here's what it says. Second flash update coming in at 8.38 p.m. or 20.38. And it says the Omni says you can buy long even the S&P as it nears the 43.27.24 area. Close is okay. So if it gets near 27, just get in. The last price is 43.34. It's got to drop for us to get sold. Place your protective sell stops at least below 42.95 at the onset of this trade. We will trail our stops higher as soon as market activity allows us to. Boom, you get that signal. You're supposed to put the orders in. You're buying. 27 or close to it if we can. So you've got your flash update. The third flash update that comes out says, now this is at 1.19 a.m. in the morning because we trade 24 hours a day. Omniax along, even the S&P, so it did work. They're 43.27 and a half. Your profit of uh, last trade is 43.39. So we got in at 27 and a half. It's trading at 43.39. Omni target is 43.50, then 57 then 72 to 74, three targets for the day. Be sure to react at these levels so you receive the second flash, you're trading with me during the day. You got in at the low so far, you did a good job.
Okay, fourth flash update. The Omni is now trading at 43.46 and a half. The first target is 43.50. We bought at this star. The first target is here. It rallied all the way up so far, got close to our first target, and I send out another flash update. If you were planning to take profits at target number one, which is 43.50, take those profits as we approach that target, just get out, then cancel your stops. If you plan on staying in for higher profit objectives, move your stops to just a tad below break even. So now we've moved stops to break even. We can't lose. We're nearing the profit objective. You either take it or at least you're at a break even spot. We're riding a trade. That was that deal pointed out for us. The fifth flash update comes out at 322. This is AM by the way, we're trading all night. The omni target of 4350 has been hit. If you took profits, be sure you cancel the stops. If you stayed in for targets two and three, be sure that your stops are still sitting a tad below break even making sure that you do not lose. Another flash update comes out. The sixth flash update says, bingo again. Target number two of 43.57 has been hit. Be sure to take your profits on all long positions. Oh, I remember this trade now. Watch this. Except a runner, which is one or two lots. I remember this trade. Move protective sell stops down uh, up to 43.49. So what we've done was we got in here, if you didn't take your profits here and it got above here, you moved your stop. So we've already moved our stop to the first profit objective. We got in here. If you didn't get out here, you moved your stop and you're still riding the profit. I remember this trade. I'll tell you all about it in a moment. Now, now I know where deal's going. Seventh flash update. ES just hit 43.67 and a half. If you remember, our profit was 43.72. But we got in at 43.27 and a half. It's all the way at 43.67 and a half. And I say, I'm taking all my profits at market and canceling my stop. That's enough money to be made in one day. And I get a set, I get everybody out. This is where it gets interesting. Knowing where and when to take profits is key to a winning trade. I sent them flash updates and said, you got three profit objectives. Get your butts out before we get to that last one. And look what happens. After it hit 43, after it hit, when we got in at 43, 27 and a half, it rallied up to our profit objectives, and look what happened next. This is a 30-minute chart. We got out right here at this store. It literally went three points higher, turned around, and spent the whole day dropping. If you did not know when to take your profits, you would have been annihilated on that trade. So the Omni will tell you where to take profits. The key in this lesson, I see what Niall was, Neil was trying to show you now. The key in this lesson is to take your profits. You have to know where profits are when to take them, and you've got to react when you get there. Because imagine being in such a good winning trade and letting it turn into a disaster on you. So if you did not take your profits, right here it says after we exited the ES, it topped out at 43.71. Before the market even opened, traders took profits at Omni levels and were out of the trade before it dumped to 43.11. Hey, Neil, very good, sir. You did a good job on that. I like it. So what's the summary? The session closed down 16.6 points on the day. Look at what happened. We got in, it rallied up, we got out, it dumped. We were out of the trade already. The range was 60 and a half points. Following the Omni, we profited 42 out of 61 of those points on a down day. Paid for a year of this platinum prescription subscriptions. Very good, Neil, thank you for this. Now, me personally, I won't put something like this together because it's not my job. My job is to show you charts. But I thank you very much for this, Neil. Maybe now people will understand what the Omni does. So that is the Omni. Thank you, Neil. Oscar's Market Navigational Indicator. And now if anyone was interested in what it is, you know, you can easily come to my site, livewithoscar.com, and sign up for it. We'll talk about that if you want to show up. Thank you, Neil. Thank you for watching that. Now let's go to work. All right. So you're looking at the E-mini S&P daily bar. You guys have seen this chart in each one of my seminars prior or webinars prior to this one. Simple. You see the red trend line here, the top and bottom. That basically indicates we're in a bear market. Simple, simple, right? If it's if it rallies up and drops and makes a new low and then a lower high and a lower low and a lower high and a lower low, you are in a bear market confirmed. Conversely. If you're in a bull market, you do the opposite, right? Simple chart. It will rally up, make a low, rally even higher, make a higher low. So that's the premise of this chart. What else is on this chart? 
this is what I found interesting when I looked at this chart. Now, here's what I want to tell you. All of these charts, this webinar I put together for you like Tuesday, Wednesday last week. I didn't know if Thursday and Friday were going to be such big bars. <laughs> it went crazy. In the last couple of days, bars are going to probably alter this webinar. So we're going to update these charts live together as it happens and see what the heck happened. So I'm going to show you the analysis on here, show you what should happen going forward. We'll update the charts to today, see where we're at, and we'll see if we can have some fun with this. So anyway, you're in a bull market. Here's what I noticed. Very, very interesting about this chart. Jump right out of here. First off, let's look at this right here. Let's make this a little dark. We have a little bit of a, you know, a little trend channel that built here. And there's a reason for this. You'll like this. So you got the trim channel on the top and the bottom line is right here. So we're going to darken them in and get this. Last time we were in this bull run and it started to look a little scary and look a little bearish like it did last week. We rallied up, came down into this sort of, you know, I would call it a parallel channel. Drop below the 200 ball moving average right here. Drops below the 200 ball moving average, right? Well, get this. What does it do when it gets below the 200 ball moving average? It drops for six days, look. It drops for six days, it's below the 200 ball moving average, gets back above it, gets above the channel, puts in a bull flag, explodes. Makes a channel moving down, gets below the 200 ball moving average. Right, that's right there. Drops for six days below that average, turns around, goes back into the channel, makes a bull flag. Let's go to top there, kids. Check this out. This is insanity. Look at how well analysis works. Here you are. We've got some sort of a kind of a parallel channel moving down, right? The same sort of action. You get below the 200 ball moving average right here. One, two, three, four. You're down, you're down below for five days. Now we're going to add in what's happened since. Today's date, we should be looking at what 11, 6, we look. by 6. And we'll do the same here. Now, watch this. We add the days back in. And look what it did. It did exactly what it did over here. I mean, exactly. It spent six days. Let me show you this. It made me excited. It spent six days under the 200 ball moving average. Went back above the average, got above the channel, and started to build the ball flag. Well, look, one, two, three, four, five, six. It spent six days below the 200 ball moving average, got back above the channel. That is exactly what happened over here. Exactly, exactly what happened. What you should see next is a bull flag in some way populate over here. I mean, if we're going to repeat patterns, you should get some sort of a bull flag populate up here now. What I found really interesting was that you did six days through the 200 ball moving average, six, and then exploded above it. That is insanity. That it did it again right here. Got above the channel, and now it's going to probably make a flag. So that's the first thing I noticed, and I said, well, let me point that out for the Omnix. That's pretty cool. All right, what that is it is, let's go to the next chart. So keep that in mind, okay? It's acting exactly the way it did when we got down here and then exploded and made this whole piece. That's what you have happening here. Let's go to the next chart that was in our webinar together. And this is exactly the same charts in the last webinar. I remember it. We used NASDAQ. Watch this. Now, you're going to find notes on these charts because we've been using this for so long. There are notes that go way back. Once the notes are old, I strike them out. See, they have strikeouts in so this says the NASDAQ daily bar. The older note was NASDAQ is in a strong bullish channel. Use the 18 bar moving average. Well, that changed. A new tip became use the 21 bar moving average, the orange one. Well, that was a webinar ago. Now we're in a new webinar. What happens next? So what happens next is I am telling you it is time is your tip. Use the 150 bar moving average or algorithm, if you will, to time NASDAQ. Why? Let's look at it. Look at how well it has worked here, here, here. And if you get back down to it, you should use it. So that was my information I wanted to share with you on the axe. 
Make sure to use it in the 150. Now watch what happens. Don't forget, I haven't updated it for last week. I did this webinar before the week happened, or in the middle of the week. So we're gonna re-update this now. Watch how insane this stuff works. Watch this, boom. Not only did it get back above the 150, but it put the 21 moving average back in growth. So now you can still, here's your tip, you can still use the 21 bar moving average. I'll show it to you in just a moment. Let me just take the strike away from this. It is no longer, it's no longer in strikeout mode. Wall Street is now keying off the 21 ball moving average. That is this orange average right here. So we're going to get rid of this little cross here because it doesn't exist anymore. I was going to tell you not to use it, but look what happened since I did the webinar. Now we are back to using the 21 ball moving average to time. So if you want a tip, trick or technique in NASDAQ, a simple 21 ball moving average has been really good to tell you by yourself. Gets above, be long, gets below be short. So that's the trick or tip I want to give you for NASDAQ. And you use the 150 ball moving average as your buffer because it seems to work on all the big moves. But right now, short term trading, you're looking at a 21 bar algorithm. 21 bar simple moving average is what you should be following to time your NASDAQ. I hope that helps. Let's move to another chart. Oh, the transportation average. What's the tip on here? is what I want to make sure everyone was aware of, the new tip. Holding support down here, because if you look, we had support, tested it again, and this is, you know, I've been using this chart in my videos all week long, you know, letting people know there's support. So support test, rally, support test, rally, support test. That's where we're at now. So let's update this chart, because what I had said was holding these support channels calls for a rally up, to the top of the blue channel. So if we hold the support, we're going to get here. That's my contention, and then higher from there. So now we are once again going to reset the days. Let's just put in what today's date would be. And we'll see what we got out there. So far, we are heading right to that spot. It has held support. We are heading right to the top of the blue channel. That's what you should be expecting from the Dow Jones transportation average in the next few days. It held the support three times in a row. That is great support now. Every analyst knows it's in every algorithm. Believe me, this right here, this piece of geometry is in all the algorithms on Wall Street right now. They know it's there. It's bounced three times. It's going to be in their trading systems. We are now moving up towards that one. So the advice is good there. It did not change once we updated. It. It's still the same. We've got more charts to look at. It all started here, kids. I don't know if you remember, but the whole top started in the Russell 2000 back here with this head and shoulders. Way back when it when the top began and they started raising interest rates, that's what we looked like right here. Left shoulder, head, right shoulder, broke the 200 ball moving average, down into a bear flag, and we've done. Old news, right? This is the old webinar. It's already crossed out. Let's move. Second webinar happened. If it gets above the 200 ball moving average, there's going to be tips. That's old news. Now we're looking at the latest tip. The triple bottom has held in Russell. What's a triple bottom? Right here. You've got a bottom here. The market came back and hit the same spot again. And finally hits the same spot again. That's considered a triple bottom. Well, now that you've had a triple bottom, the market should hold. And the next stop on this train should be the top of this blue channel. That's my advice to you. We should hold here and move to the top of the blue channel. This was put together on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of last week. We are now going to see where we're at in that phase. Did it make it there yet? Is it on its way? Look at that. Is this not sick the way analysis works? Look what this went and did in two days after I did this webinar, after I put it together for you. It did exactly what it was supposed to do technically. And it still looks bullish from here, especially if we can close or get above this channel. So analysis lately is just firing on all 12 cylinders. Forget about eight cylinders. It is firing on all 12 cylinders lately. And if you're good at analysis, you should be killing these markets right now. You should be calling them really, really well. I can help you with that. Trading them is different from calling markets. You can call markets really well, 
and you can trade them and blow it all up. That's another aspect to what's going on here. What I'm showing you how to do here is to call the markets properly, what tips you can use and tricks. You gotta also be able to trade it properly, and that's where the Omni method comes in. It tells us where to get in and get out. So as humans, we don't screw it all up one thing at a time. Anyway, the triple bottom should bring us to at least the top of this channel, and that's been done already. Maybe we'll get more out of it. So that is the Russell 2000. Let's see what other charts. Ah, crude oil. Nice. Crude oil, we had stuff to say in the last webinar and the one before that webinar, but this tip actually, the one that's crossed out in the last webinar said, staying below the 100 ball moving average is key. Use it to decide your market direction. If you get below it, it's great for selling. If you get above it, it's great for buying. We also said in last webinar that staying below 9350, which is this spot right here, is key. Well, the market ran up from that last webinar, got to 9350, stayed below, and broke. So this note no longer should be, it shouldn't have a strikeout. This is an actual still valid note. So this note remains valid, staying below 9350 is key. And we also had this note, which I am now going to show you why I'm unstriking this too. We are going to continue to use the 100 ball moving average at the time, crude oil. And here's why. If you look at how well it worked, this is your 100 ball moving average right here, right? It has worked better than anything. I don't think anything works as good I've seen lately on crude. I mean, it's just amazing. And now we're here. This is us right now, top day. And I was going to say, I don't think the 100 matters anymore, but then when we update the chart, you'll see it does. So we have a new tip. 75 is your target. The 100 moving average remains valid. I didn't expect I was going to be telling you that today, but watch when I update the chart. So we are dropping to 75. That's where crude should go next. And the 100 ball moving average, or, or algorithm, if you will, will be your trigger. And let me update this chart and we'll see what it's doing at the moment. So it is working still, it holds very well. The 100 ball moving average on crude is absolutely your ticket. Use it if you're a crude trader, it is a great tip. It is a great technique. It has worked for this entire downward. Probably one of the best tips in this webinar. Make sure that you're looking at the 100 ball moving average if you're a crude trader. Let's see what else we have. Oh my goodness. <laughs> There's so much on here. Now, bonds, the 150 ball moving average has literally been Wall Street's darling on bonds for years. They just love it, love it, love it. 150, the black average. They absolutely love this thing on Wall Street when it comes to trading bonds. It's been that way for years. Who cares why? I like to put a wheel on the car and make it drive really fast. I don't need to reinvent wheels. I don't need to know why the 150 works. I like to know that it does. So the 150 bar moving average in bonds was in vogue for quite some time, but now this is old news. What we had was we had some notes. It must hold right here. It must hold this area. So it must, if it holds this area and breaks, so we're going to get rid of a lot of these notes now. I think that we don't need this stuff in our way anymore. Let's cut that out of the way. This whole must hold thing doesn't matter. Those arrows don't matter. We are getting down to just the science behind these averages because they seem to matter more than anything in bonds. So we'll get rid of anything else that looks like it's in our way. We don't need to see it. We don't care. What we want to see is what is going on with these averages right now. Here's what I will tell you. When rates go up, T-bonds go down. When rates go down, T-bonds go up. They're an exact opposite relationship with one another. If interest rates go up, T-bonds go down, futures. If T-bond futures are going up, interest rates are going down. So you need to know that. Then there's this. The 150 was a great, great average for quite some time in bonds. I've got a new one for you. It works even better. The 31 bar moving average. Watch. See it? It's right here. I'm going to blow it up for you. Let's make it darker and blow it up. It's amazingly accurate. So now, let's just do that again. I want it to be a little thicker. 
look at this blue average and its amazing accuracy rate in bonds. I mean, it picked up right about here and just actually it worked from here over, but right here it picks up and just becomes the thing that stops bonds from going higher every time, right? So I say that you should start using the 31 bar moving average to time your 30 year bonds. And we will update the bond chart now as well and see where we're at. It worked as it should have, right through the average. It told you that you should get long. It has worked so well. I want you to use the 31 ball moving average to time your bonds. You get back down to it, now you can buy it. If you settle for two days under it, you can go short. So that's the tip I want you to use in bonds. I hope that will help you in the future if you are a bond trader. There aren't as many bond traders today as there used to be, but there's still a bunch of us out there, a bunch of you out there. And make sure that you will use that 31 if you use bonds, if you're trading bonds. In fact, I'm going to mark that just so it's before my eyes for the next level. We'll leave that sitting there so that we can make reference to it next time we pull this chart on next webinar. What else is out there? The US dollar. So, hmm. Interest in what happened with the dollar. The US dollar was working on something called the 70 ball moving average, which was like biting on the dollar. I'm going to make it thicker for you. Can check this out. We've morphed into something else, but this 70 ball moving average, and let's just make the other one clear for now. We're going to flip these back and forth. Let's just see both. This 70 ball moving average capped off the dollar and then just became its darling. You knew when to get long, you knew when to get short. Wall Street just started to love the 70. Well, look back here at how much better it worked. 70 worked better back here, right? If you ask me. This is the green average, works here, works here, works all down here. I think it gets a little ugly, it gets a little muddy once we move forward. So I think I'd rather see you start to use something else, the 19 ball moving average. Look at it. And this is what I had planned for you on Tuesday last week. I said, from now on, start using this because look at how much better it's working. And let me grab a little tool and I'll show you what I mean by that. So look at how well the 70's not working anymore, right? The green one's not working. Look at how well the 19 ball moving average is working. It's giving you signals all over the place. So, okay, my tip to you was, we're going to now start using the 19 ball moving average. And then I updated. Look at this. <laughs> then I did the update. So I, I've never done a webinar like this where I'm updating for you, but I just figured I'd give it a whirl. Well, when I was going to tell you to stop using the 70 and start using the 19 ball moving average, that's already old news three days ago. Now look. Went back to the 70. See that? Now you can go back to the 70 bar algo or moving average and just use that. So that's my tip on dollars. I thought I was going to tell you to use the 19 ball moving average, but it moved away from it already. And it's playing back at the 70. So 70 has come back in vogue. And personally, me, I would play in between the two averages. I would use the 19 when we're near it. I would use the 70 when we're near it. You get below 70, dollar drops. Watch that 70 ball moving average there, okay? So that's in your dollar. And I'm simply trying to give you things that you can use moving forward. Let's go to another chart. And of course, if you've got questions, save them for when we're done. We'll go over the questions together. Euro currency daily bar. The tip on here in the last webinar was to use the 100 bar algorithm or moving average because it's been working like a charm. And that is this teal average. And as you can see, it literally works like a charm. I mean, it is just. Beautiful the way it works. But it just worked perfectly. Exactly what it should do, it does. It's a beautiful average. It's your 100 ball moving average on Euro. New tip forget the 100, the 50 is now working even better. This is crossed out, right? Struck out. The 50 is now in vogue. We are at it right there. It's the 50 ball moving average. I'm going to now make that thicker for you so you can see what it is. 
This is the one that's become in vogue. So if you had information on using the 100 in euro, it has now gone to the 50. That seems to be the thing that the traders are playing around and not so much the 100 anymore. But then we do have to update, right? So let's do our update and see where we're at at this moment. And that average is working well. That is your average. Use the 50 ball moving average on Euro. If you're Euro traders, it works really well there. So that would be a tip for Euro traders. If you are looking to get involved in the Euro and you don't know what to use, a 50 ball moving average is a nice trigger for you these days. Of course, you can come to my site live with Oscar and we can work out an Omni on Euro. Let me tell you exactly where it wants to buy and sell. But for your purposes at home, a little bit longer term picture, use your 50 ball moving average to time your own. I think you'll find that it will give you pretty decent signals. And oh, here we go, Mr. Bitcoin. <laughs> so, Bitcoin, as I've been showing you this chart video after video for the last few weeks because Bitcoin's in vogue lately, my tip was Wall Street, Wall Street watches algos. 50 ball moving average. They watch that in Bitcoin as aptly as they watch it in any stock, in any fund. If Bitcoin stays above the 50 bar MA, it will continue to attract buyers. That was my message when we were here. That was in the last webinar. It got above the 50 bar and did attract buyers, got into a bull flag, and my tip to you is remains the same. Bitcoin will be trading 85,000 per Bitcoin within 2.9 years, according to our calculations. 85,000 in 2.9 years, according to our calculations. Now, this has been a five-year target. We're counting down. We're down to two years, nine months. You will get there. And look at how well it's behaving in this stair-step pattern. And if we update, let's see what's happened since this bull flag has formed. I don't see an update in there. I'd like to see what's happened since. Since the bull flag is formed, you got above it a little, came back down, and maybe we're hovering inside of it. So Bitcoin, long term, much higher. Short term, buy pullbacks into the bottom of the flag. I think you'll be fine in Bitcoin. Your major key is the 50 bar algo in Bitcoin. They love it on Wall Street. Whatever, whatever. Remember, we don't reinvent wheels here. We put them on our car, drive really fast with them. No need to research and find out why. By the time you find that out, they're on to something else and you're looking at old news. We want to see what they do and work with them immediately. What does Wall Street do? This is what they're looking at. You need to be looking at that as well. Wow, NVIDIA. Interesting. NVIDIA has been part of the AI revolution. As you can see with this chart, it's just gone crazy since AI has been released. The old tip on this was to use the 21 bar algorithm or moving average, which is this teal. And it worked really well. Look at all the arrows and the circles worked well. Well, there's a new tip now. We are going to go with something different. Let's make this one thinner. We are now going to go until they change with something called the nine bar. Let's go change that. Let's square my average and change its properties. Check this out. It's a nine bar. And this is what they're keying off of lately. They are keying off this nine bar average starting here. Boom. Well, actually, it starts about here. They just key off of it, key off of it, key off of it. Wall Street's keying off of it. Wall Street's keying off of it. You need to key off of it too. That is. The nine ball moving average it will change but that is what they're keying off of in nvidia at the moment and of course if we update nvidia watch what happens look what it does it abandons ship on the nine and goes right back to the 21. <laughs> so we are now going to take away the strikeout <coughs> and tell you it is fine safe and fair to continue using the 21 bar out. Look, it's this one right here. So right back to it. It only took a couple of days. It abandoned it for just a couple of days and went right back to it. 
So we'll make this one a lot lighter, and this is your average that you will be following right now. The 21 bar, a little bit. Seems to drop to the nine bar when it gets under it, but this is no longer in vogue. This one is. Back to your 21 bar for your timing if you are an NVIDIA trader. What other tips can I find for you cats before this thing comes to an end? Uh, oh, down. All right, so the advice here, of course, in the past was the 60 ball moving average, which is now I got strikeouts through it because that was the advice we were using. And in fact, let's talk to them for a moment because you can see how well it used to work. This 60 ball moving average, if you look around these arrows here, 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 I mean, it just was the perfect average to use. Just perfect. And then it fell out of fog right here at the circle. This is the spot where, for whatever reason, the 60 ball moving average falls out of fog. Why do we switch to? Looks like it switches to the 200 ball moving average much longer term. So my advice is getting above the 200 ball moving average and getting above this channel will return the market back into a bull run. And let's see what we've done since I built this webinar a few days ago. Look at that. We are now above the channel, above the 200, starting to look at the 60 again, and this should augur for higher levels moving forward. Of course, we did actually do what the analysis projected we should, which was get above the channel, get above the 200, continue your bull run. So that's what we were expecting. Use your 200 ball moving average now to time the Dow. That's it's going to be king off of that for, for a little while until we get away from it. And believe me, the street loves that average more than any other on the block. So make sure you're paying attention to it. Uh -huh, a lot of stuff on this chart, but it's not as ugly as you might think. A lot of information on here because remember, we've been using this for a long time now. So it just goes back and it tells you about all the stuff we were looking at back in the day and then what happens moving forward and next webinar, next webinar. So, yes, there's a lot of info, but it's actually pretty discerning. You're looking at the Dow Jones. Let's just concentrate on where it is today. All, right, all this stuff happened in the past, so let's kind of concentrate on today. What's happening right now? So we came out of the inverted head and shoulders, rallied up, put in a normal head and shoulders, right? An upright head and shoulders, one, two, three, and did come down, got below the 200 ball moving average. And here's what I find interesting on this one. Here's the channel. Let me just see if I can talk in this channel inventory. And let's do the top one. So we've got a channel. We dropped under the 200 ball moving average. We keep hitting the top and almost at the bottom and almost top of the channel. Getting above the trend channel and the 200 ball moving average all, all offers a buy and hold signal. If you could get above this spot, I am telling you it is a buy and hold. That is your tip on this chart. Look at the chart. Once again, we are looking at Dow Jones Daily. And what I'm telling you about Dow Jones Daily is if you can get above this spot right here, it is a buy and hold. Let's see what happens so far. We got through the channel. We're above the 200. You are in a holding pattern. I say the market continues higher throughout the rest of this year. Of course, we could break back below this and we might have to reassess what we're looking at right now at this moment in time that is confirmation of more upside coming. Nothing goes straight up, but we are not looking at the downside. We're looking at the upside moving forward. Let's see what else we have. Let's look at this little bag of tricks. Oh, we're at the NASDAQ now. Personally, I'm just going to tell you this looks like a bear flag to me. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe it does to you. I have been looking at flags for a long time, kids. That looks like a bull flag. Looks like a flag. Maybe it'll act like a flag. Let's see if it's updated, by the way. Because weeklies are different. Yeah, weekly should already be updated. So it's already updated. I think that's a flag. I don't know. Maybe it's not. I think it is. We're going to have to wait because each one of these these bars 
is a full week's worth of training. It's a weekly job. So we have to wait, but if you ask me, this is nothing more than getting ready to continue higher. Now, what normally happens is once you get anywhere near the 200 ball moving average on your weekly NASDAQ, you spend a lot of time going in the other direction. All right, so let's see if it just continues going in the other direction. What else do we have in our bag of tricks? We looked at NASDAQ. Ah, the Dow Jones. Man. Dow Jones weekly. We're looking at weekly charts now. In the last webinar, my advice was, this looks like a bull flag to me, this black thing. The tip was, a wait for the bull flag to break out. And you can buy dips down to the bottom of the blue check. Wait for the flag to break out, then we can buy dips. Well, the flag did break out, and look at how buying dips work. And finally, the flag gives up after it makes its projection. We start to head down, and what was very big was the 50 ball moving average. That was the big one right here, the blue guy. Well, the new tip is this. We're going to make an adjustment from the 50 ball moving average to the 170 ball moving average, 170, using the 200 ball moving average as your stop gap. Now, let me show you what that means. We are going to get away from the 50 for now. Let's make it thinner. We're going to pretend it's not there for the moment because our new bias is to buy or trade around the 170 bar moving average, which is this orange one. That should be your way of trading Dow on a weekly using the 200 bar moving average, the green one, as your buffer. You don't want to drop below that for a settlement of the week. That's a problem. You're going to use the orange one as your trigger buy. And then you're going to use the green one if you settle a week below that to get out of that trade for swing trades. So let's look at it. Let's update this. And what looks to have happened is it is working as of today. This is a weekly chart, so this is today's bar. It has gone back up. So it, it is hard. It's actually last week's bar. It is holding that average. The 150 is not valid anymore. The 200, excuse me, the 170 becomes valid with the 200 as your buffer. 170 is orange. Use that to time your weekly Dow for you swing traders out there. Um, it seems to work really well, and you do not break the 200 ball moving average very often in the Dow. So use that as your buffer. 170 is your ticket on the Dow, the other Dow weekly. So now this one just speaks for itself. In the last presentation, a couple of months back, eight weeks, nine weeks ago, whatever it was, I said, you know what, this is a very healthy market. It's stair-stepping higher. It's a sign of a healthy, wide breath, a widening out breath market value. What's stair-stepping? You run up, you stair-step down a little bit. You step back up, you make another channel moving down a little bit. You stair-step back up. That is a healthy market when you see that. That looks good to me. I like seeing this pattern. That's what you want to see. So it's still stair-stepping higher, my advice in this video. And there is a new tip, holding above the 200 ball moving average and the channel, all this for prices to move much higher going forward. So we need this to hold right here where it's testing. If it does, you've got a good signal that the market wants to go higher. Let's update this and see what it's done since I built this webinar last week. It has held so far on the weekly and has rallied back up. Now, so far, so good, kids. You are looking at early indications that the market is trying to tell you we are going to have a Santa Claus rally because it spent its time in October moving down to a key level and held that key level. Once it holds a key level, you usually start to see the opposite side, like here. Boom. So we held the key level and we're starting to go up already holding that 200 will hold up for much higher prices in the future uh, what else did we have prepared these are all the same charts we looked at in the last two webinars guys are traders i just want to go over them with you again so we just did the dow and we are at the e-mini s p e-mini s p weekly probably the best of all the charts as you can see way back in the day we had this massive channel rally then it started to put in resistance, which 
failed every time it got to a failure, right? Come on, let's take a little tool so we can check this out. Failure, right? What's that? And dumps. Failure. Failure. It's above. That's different. What is that? It's above and then holds. Now that's different, right? Walk with that's different. We get into a shadow, moves higher, moves back down, and here's where things get interesting. The same exact average is working on the on the ES weekly, as you as you would expect. So tip for fund managers: use the 170 ball moving average to time your E mini S and P. Let me show you. Look at this. This works really well. This has been working like a charm, this orange average. Look at it. And watch this when we update. We bounced, we hit that average and exploded, kids. It works like a charm. Look how much money was made in between hitting that average and or just getting near the average and moving above it. So it worked really, really well on your E mini SP chart. I think you should continue using that 170. It works like a charm, and it will help you in your timing. So the charts that we looked at three webinars ago, two webinars ago, and this webinar right now are all basically the same, and they're, they are pointing higher right now, even though we had our little October pullback. I hope these charts are helping you. I hope you gleaned a little bit of a couple of tips if you got from this video, that's fantastic. That's what I was hoping for. Jeff, any questions? Is there any way I can help you? Well, uh, two questions real quick for you. Sure. Um, DPAM says, hey, Oscar, does your Omni service trade primarily futures or only futures? No, actually, it works with stocks, ETFs, futures. I like futures better than single stocks, but it works really well on the stocks. And just about anything I've applied on. I know it's crazy. We've even applied this to weather charts and it worked out. <laughs> so whatever, it seems to work really well. And it's been working since 1984. It's kind of cool. Ron, Ron wants to know, um, I'm on the Telegram with Oscar. The alerts, uh, yes, I'm on the Telegram, but I don't see the recommendation. So the question is, do I need a paying, to be a paying member to see these? So the recommendations, I, I free them up at the end of the day. Let me see if I have the site open so I can just kind of quickly give you an overview, but I free them up at the end of each day so the public can see them, but I keep them closed during the day on purpose so that the public can't see them, right? Because if you're in a trade with me and we're getting in at a certain spot, we got stops and we don't want to show the world what we're doing, not until we get out of the trade. So yes, the service I'm embarrassed to tell you is like $4 a day or whatever the number is. I, I'm embarrassed, but you can have me in your corner for like less than the price of a cup of coffee. I know it's sad, but it is what it is. That's the way the world works today. So yes, you will. Uh, there is a pay. It's like four dollars and sixty cents a day, or two hundred bucks a month, whatever it is. But once you pay, you would receive what we call the flash updates. Then what happens is any time we do a trade at all, if we trade, you receive a pop-up window. And in fact, that pop-up window looks like this. It's it's kind of interesting because it will wake you up and tell you what to do. As well as I send it out on a Discord channel immediately. I don't want to switch right now to the paper in the camera. But I also send it out on Discord and it goes out through your email. So we make sure that you are encompassed. And then it shows up on my site as well. So not only does it go out through that pop up window that I mentioned, and it's out on Discord and it's going out through email, but it will populate over here for you as well. So we encompass the traders with the signals. But make sure to make here's why. If you say you missed the signal to me, I know you've lied and you stuck your head in the sand because you were afraid to react. You can't miss these signals. They come at you from every direction. All right. Um, last question. And we are, uh, as always, running late. But last question um, that we have time for. Um, would you call yourself a day service, a swing trading service, or uh, something else? So. It is a day trader's service, right? It's for people who want to be in in the morning and out by the close and then maybe back in the next day. So it's for a one trade per day. It works for swing trading and longer term trading. I present it for swing for day trading. But in reality, we swing the day. You know what I mean? That's kind of what we call it. We're not jumping in and jumping out by any means. We're getting in at a specific level. 
waiting for a big run and getting out. And then we'll All right. As always, Oscar, thank you. It's always great to have you. Thank you. I'm losing my mic, my thing. Thank you, thank you for having me, Jeff. Thank you. I know this was a little bit different than I normally present, but I I was asked to change it up, so I did. <laughs>